country or pâte fouettée and well in French which you all must know that I know very well so let's stick to puff pastry it's gonna sound better the procedure to make puff pastry consists in three main steps first the détrempé which is the basic dough we're gonna make second the bourrage which is a block of butter that we're gonna shape and third the paton which is the bourrage um, inside the détrempé involving it and we are gonna call it the paton so three basic steps flour with my salt and you actually need very few ingredients to make our puff pastry you only need overpost flour salt butter and water so very few ingredients for a quite complicated recipe that's how I like it so here I have my overpost flour with the salt we are gonna make a well in the center we have to expand and make a pretty big one get up in the morning can't keep it First, you're gonna add your water. Falling all over myself, and I could jump out on my skin. Wanna break the door down? Then slowly start to incorporate the flour around the first ring of the edges until it makes like a paste. Now you can add your melted butter that cannot be hot, it has to be room temperature. Now all the flour left can be incorporated. You don't have to work this dough, we just want to bring it all together. Just like this, like a clean surface. So now this detrempe is done, we are going to shape into a square and it should be softer than a pâte brisée. You can feel it and you can see it is definitely softer than a pâte brisée. So we shape it into a square and then with your scraper we are going to uh, make an, an X halfway through the dough. And this X will help the gluten strands to relax and that's what we need. So it's gonna make it easier for the gluten strands to relax. Only halfway through the dough, okay? Now, we cover it with plastic wrap and refrigerate for at least 30 minutes or it could be an hour. So now my detergent is resting and I'm gonna shape our bourrage. Bourrage is a block of butter. So we need cold butter and we are going to put this butter between two layers of plastic wrap and then we are going to shape it the size of our detrempe the similarities between this recipe and the croissant recipe are many because they are both laminated doughs which means there are layers of dough and fat so dough and fat, dough and fat and when you bake it, the fat trap between the layers of dough puffs up and then it just grows so this is called mechanical leavening because I'm not using yeast here or I'm not using baking powder or baking soda the only thing that's gonna make this puff pastry rise is the mechanical leavener which is the uh, air and the, the air and the water trap between the layers of dough Place the right amount of your butter in the center of your plastic wrap, cover with another plastic wrap, and shape it until everything is homogeneous. Now with your rolling pin, spank it. Oh no! Look what happened! You know why? Because everybody loves my rolling pin so much, it broke. Mm, let me think in a quick solution here. Oh, uh, yeah. So keep doing this, spanking your uh, butter until you shape it in a square the size of your detrempe that is in your refrigerator. Now with your hands, give the final finishing to it. The more precise you are at this stage, the more precise your um, puff pastry will be. So be careful and take your time to do a pretty nice square. You know I love geometrical stuff, so. 
Now that we have our butter into a block, which is the bourrage, bourrage we are gonna refrigerate this and make sure it stays in the same temperature as the detrempe so that we can involve those two together and make it only one thing, the paton. Now that the dough relaxed in my refrigerator and I had time to go buy a new rolling pin because I don't know if it's because of you guys telling me my rolling pin looked nice all the time, it actually broke. So a little accident happened. But um, so my dough relaxed and now I'm gonna open it and incorporate my butter that is shaped like a square, same size as my de trempe, and then we are going to incorporate this both and make only one thing. Sprinkle your flour in the surface that you're going to work with your dough, and turn the axe to face you, like this, and start opening the petals, just like this. Make sure you leave a little pump on the center. All the four sides look pretty even to me. And now I'm gonna take my bourrage, my butter shaped into a block, and place on the center of this flower, which is not a flower, but I like to call it flower. Just place it on that pump, press it down, and start closing every single layer of it. Bring each piece to the edges of the butter, making sure you trap the butter very well. Imagine you're wrapping a present for your favorite friend. And you feel better. Now the serious work begin. So sprinkle some flour on your surface, sprinkle some flour on the top of your uh, paton, and let's start rolling it out. First thing to do is to spank this dough a little bit so you can spread the butter evenly on the first layer, like this. And once you reach kind of this length, it, you're good to start rolling it. Now that I finish spanking it, I'm gonna uh, roll out this dough and don't load it with tons of flour or it's gonna get too dry. Putting a medium pressure on your hands, roll this dough just like this nicely and it's hard for me to put little pressure on my hands because I'm quite aggressive. I like to put lots of pressure on my hands but this is nice, I'm, I'm, I'm good doing this. Now that you have reached approximately 58 centimeters, you are gonna brush off all the excess flour so you can fold the first third like this, brush off the excess flour again, and fold the second third. And this is uh, what we are gonna call the first turn. So we did one turn here. Always maintaining the square shape, we are gonna roll out this dough again and give it the second turn. So you have to turn it to make it like a buck and then open it again. Podem me chamar e me pedir e me rogar e podem mesmo this is the second and last turn before you refrigerate this. You can only do two turns at a time before you refrigerate the dough. So we did two turns, that's it. We cannot keep doing this until we refrigerate this. Now do you understand why it's called book turn? Because you turn this page to your right, just like a book, and then you can read, read butter and dough and flour. Now time to recycle that plastic wrap that I told you to save. Now you did two turns, right? So the best way to keep track of your turns is to put two fingers, you did two turns, right? You open, you roll out the, your dough twice. So you press 
your dough with two fingers so you can keep track of it. So you have two turns. Get your plastic wrap, wrap it up, wrap it up, and then uh, put in your refrigerator for 30 minutes. If you start to, if you want to save time and suddenly you have this brilliant idea of just rolling out, rolling out, rolling out, your butter is going to skip because it's going to melt. It's important to keep this always cold. Your surface must be cold, your hands cannot be warm, everything must be kind of cold. So that's the best way to make your puff pastry. This is what happens when your dough gets warm and your uh, butter starts to skip in, and also when you don't have enough table flour. 30 minutes have passed and I'm gonna give my dough two more turns. This is like a pattern you're gonna follow. Every time you take your dough out of your refrigerator, you give it two turns. First turn, fold it into thirds, uh, turn like a book to your right, like, yeah, like I'm doing right now, and then do the second turn, and that's it, refrigerate again. We are going to do this three times. Every time, we are going to roll it out twice, so we are going to give it the total of six turns. I guess I'm a little bit confused with my own fingers. One, two, three, four. Now wrap it and refrigerate for more 30 minutes. Now going for my last and final turn, I looked up for God or something. I don't know why I looked up. And just do again everything I taught you how to do twice before. Six to eight turns is the advisable. And if you try to do more, your layers will be so thin that it's gonna just start to rip. Well, and after eight turns, hundreds of layers, and one broken rolling pin, my puff pastry is ready to be used. Six turns. You can turn this puff pastry into Napoleons, into palmiers, boulevard, or tarts. There are like thousands of recipes with puff pastry, and it's just super delicious. Even if you eat it by itself, it's good. You know, just bake it and eat it, and it's amazing. You should keep your puff pastry like this, like a book, remember I taught you how to make a book? And anytime you need it, you just take it out of your refrigerator, roll it out, and use it. And don't forget, the thinner you roll it out, the shorter your puff pastry will be after baked. And even though it takes a little bit of time to make your puff pastry, I think it's super worth it. Because most puff pastries you can find at grocery stores and specialty stores, they're not made with butter. Uh, just because butter is one of the most expensive fats out there, and you know, when those companies are making huge quantities of it, they want profit, so they don't use butter, they use some other, uh, just some other fat, they use other like kind of vegetable uh, shortening and this kind of thing. So if you make our puff pastry, you're going to be 100% sure you're using butter. And our next recipe, we are going to make an amazing, amazing Portuguese dessert with this puff pastry. Watch me. Keep your eye on me. Please.